Thank you for joining us with the Colorado Noxious Weed Awareness Campaign. 2020 marks the 30th anniversary of the Colorado Noxious Weed Act. The campaign is a joint effort between Jefferson County Invasive Species Management, the Colorado Department of Agriculture, and the Colorado Weed Management Association. Noxious weeds are invasive, aggressive, non-native plants that have arrived here from places like Europe or Asia. They displace native or desirable plants that wildlife, fish, and insects need to survive. They infest agricultural crops and increase the cost of production. Noxious weeds affect ecosystems by disrupting soil, water, and fire regimes. We launched our Noxious Weed Awareness Campaign to help landowners become better stewards of their land and to understand what they can do. So first step in any weed management program is to learn to identify the noxious weeds in your area. Also, you need to learn how to manage them. Not every technique is going to work for every weed. And then the most important part of this is let your neighbors and friends and family know about these. Together, we can make a difference. If you need more information, contact your local city or county weed manager. The weed that we're talking about in this presentation is myrtle spurge. Myrtle spurge is a Colorado List A noxious weed that requires complete elimination. Elimination means that you have to get rid of all plant parts that are capable of reproduction every year. Myrtle spurge is a perennial forb. That means that it's a leafy plant and it returns every year from the same root stock. Myrtle spurge was introduced as an ornamental xeriscape plant, but it escaped into our natural areas and it's become very prevalent along the Front Range and on the western slope of Colorado. It can be found in gardens, along rights of way, and in wildlands and rangelands. It's very aggressive and displaces native plants that wildlife need to survive. Myrtle spurge contains a milky, toxic sap. If you get it on your skin, it can cause blistering and rashes. Every year, a number of people end up in the hospital because of exposure to this plant. Myrtle spurge has grayish green leaves that are kind of egg shaped and attached directly to the stem. It has thick stems that trail across the soil. And they have yellow green flowers that are inconspicuous. What appears to be petals are really modified bracts. And the flowers show up between March through May. Myrtle spurge reproduces by seed. The seeds develop in the seed pods, and when the seed pods ripen, they explode and expel the seeds up to 15 feet. And these seeds are covered in a gluey substance that helps them attach to animals or to other plants in the area. Myrtle spurge also reproduces by plant fragments. They can regrow from either stem fragments or can regrow from roots. Myrtle spurge has a very thick, deep taproot. When you're thinking about managing myrtle spurge, you have a couple of options available to you. One of them is hand pulling. You would remove the plant, including that top couple of inches of that big, thick root. You'd bag the plant and dispose of it at a landfill. And then remember to wear eye protection, rubber gloves, long sleeves to keep away from that toxic sap. Another method to control your myrtle spurge would be to use herbicide. And it's best to pick the particular herbicide that will work best for your particular situation. So visit the Colorado Department of Agriculture's website for their recommendations. 
If you need more information about Myrtle Spurge in your area, contact your local city or county weed manager. They're always available to help you and to help provide specific recommendations for your situation. If you need more information, please visit us at our websites, Jefferson County, Colorado Weed Management Association, or the Colorado Department of Agriculture. Thank you for joining us. We hope this has been helpful.